and welcome back. So today we are going to do some practicing of TCH words. So you're going to fold it. I folded mine the hot dog way. So it's the long way. I've got two sides. I'm going to put Miss R at the top. And I have room on both sides to write down my words. I think we're probably going to do about 10 words. Okay, so I'm going to freeze mine so you guys know what it looks like. And then I'm going to give you the words. And then you guys are going to write the words on the line. Um, do you write your name or our name? You write your name. I'm sorry. When I write my name, you write your name. It kind of is, but it's really just practicing the TCH sound. Um, you might want them numbered. Okay, here we go. Number one. Number one, the word is itch. Gosh, my mosquito bite makes me itch. Itch. Make sure you do that for number one. Number one is itch. My friend, we're not talking about it. You're just listening and you're doing the best job you can. Number two is glitch. I do not like it when I have a computer glitch. I think you have one right now. Nope, I froze yours. Oops, I am having a glitch. Um, all right, so, okay. So, my friends at home, Ms. Richardson needs to write the words down so I can show them to you so you see nothing now that I'm realizing I was putting them so you can see. Oh, I can't do anything with that. All right. I guess I'll just do it off screen. Okay. Number three. Nope, nope, it doesn't matter. Number three, catch. I had, I tried to catch the ball and I missed it. Number four, pitch. I am not good at trying to pitch the ball, pitch. Number five, witch. Lots of kids like to be a witch on Halloween. Witch. What number is it? Five is witch. What was the fourth one? Pitch. I am not good at trying to pitch the ball. All right. Scratch. When you have a mosquito bite, you need to try not to scratch. Number five is witch. Lots of kids like to be a witch for Halloween. Crutch. I had to have a crutch to help me walk after I broke my leg. Crutch. Um, I don't know. Do they follow the TCH rule? Snitch. Sometimes people try to snitch an extra cookie. Snitch. Snitch. Sneak. Snatch will be grab really quick. Snitch is like sneak it. Botch. Um, 
Um, I hope I do not botch up the spelling test. Botch. And this is cute because the word is Dutch. Dutch, like the Dutch uh, used to use wooden shoes, and sometimes they still do with their dancing, Dutch. All right, here we go. Check your own. Give yourself a smiley if you got it right. Number one is itch, I-T-C-H, itch. Number two, glitch, G-L-I-T-C-H, glitch. Number three, catch, C-A-T-C-H. Number four, pitch, P-I-T-C-H, pitch. Number five, which, W-I-T-C-H, which. Number six, scratch, S-C-R-A-T-C-H, scratch. Number seven, crutch, C-R-U-T-C-H, crutch. Number eight, snitch, S-N-I-T-C-H, snitch. Number nine, botch, B-O-T-C-H, botch. Number 10, has to be a capital because it's a name of a person or um, person like, uh, a person um, like Dutch from the Netherlands, Dutch. Capital D-U-T-C-H, Dutch. All right, so, um, Put the number right out of 10 on your paper, and then you can put it in the blue basket to go in your Friday folder. So we are using your little booklet from Poppy, and we're going to um, begin to transfer it into Wonder. So watch what I'm going to do. I am going to put a W over the O. W O N D And now it's our Wonder Poppy book. Ah, ha, 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 ha. That was genius. Thanks, I was feeling kind of smartical for a minute. So, now it's our Wonder Poppy book. And the cool thing of it is, it's still a, if you look back at our, well, we probably should do this one about Poppy first, though. Um... Let's go to the fiction story mountain and we'll finish this about uh, Poppy and then we will um, go into wonder today just because then we'll have that one a little bit done. All right, so, so I'm on plot structures where I'm at. And... Hopefully you can see this. So this is falling action. And I'm going to put falling action up here. So falling action is 1 to 2 events. that happen after 
the climax And then it leads up to the solution of the problem. Sorry, I'm trying to keep it still for you. That went blurry. Hang on. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and write... So this is my falling action. And I'm going to go ahead and write my resolution. Resolution. Is at. The end. Where. The main problem. or conflict gets solved. So we read a, we did the climax the other day. It says the most exciting part of the story. It's usually the big event you won't forget. What would be the climax of the poppy story? Sorry, my friends. I thought I was taping it. So the climax is the most exciting part of the story. It's usually the big event you won't forget. And then we said the climax is the battle where Mr. Okax crashes into the salt lick. He breaks it apart and he dies. Now, if that's the climax, what do you think the falling action would be? And they said the falling action is one to two events at, that happen after the climax, and it leads up to the solution of the problem. Well, what did Poppy do after Mr. Okax dies? She did, but she decided she started heading for what? She headed for home. Why did she head for home? Because she wants to tell the family what she she found out, right? So the following action is Poppy going home, right? Or Poppy heading home. And why does she head home? She's going to tell the family what? Mr. Okax died and that there's enough what? Yep, so. And then she's telling them Mr. Okax died. And everyone can move, right? Or there's enough food for everyone. Everyone can move. And then there's enough food, right? Now, the resolution, I don't know if I have enough 
So what was the resol what would the resolution be? Resolution is at the end where the main problem or conflict gets solved. Well the main problem is can they move? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so the the resolution is Poppy's family can move. Move. And there's enough food, right? Now they also added, Avi also added the little tidbit of Poppy and Rye dancing on Bannock Hill, right, with her family. But the, really it was all kind of wrapped up when... Yeah, so they were all wrapped up when she, they found out they could move. There's enough food for everybody. Nobody's going to die. They don't have to all go their separate ways, which is what she came in on the last meeting. They were all going to have to move. Everybody was going to have to disperse and fend for themselves, right? All right, so um, we are moving to Wanda. So, we talked a little bit about um, Augie. We met a little bit of Augie yesterday. So, um, here are the questions you might want to be thinking about. Why do people look away quickly when they first see August? Um, in this section, August discusses the issue of him going to school. Why has he never gone to school? Do you think he should? We've talked a little bit about some of it, but we didn't get very far yesterday. I'm not sure if we're going to get to page 24 today or not, but we'll give it a go. All right, you ready? All right, here we go. All right. And yesterday we read about Christopher's house. So today we are on page 10, driving. Oops. Let me smush this somewhere. Which way? There we go. Driving. It was a long drive home. So remember they were at Christopher's house. Ma Augie overhears mom talking to Christopher's mom about wanting to send him to... Um, school, he's upset, dad's on his side, he's super excited. Here we go. It was a long drive home. I fell asleep in the back seat like I always do. My head on Via's lap like she was my pillow. A towel wrapped around the seat belt so I wouldn't drool all over her. Via fell asleep too and mom and dad talked quietly about grown up things I didn't care about. I don't know how long I was sleeping, but when I woke up, there was a full moon outside the car window. It was purple. It was a purple night, and we were driving on a highway full of cars. And then I heard Mom and Dad talking about me. We can't keep protecting him, Mom whispered to Dad, who was driving. We can't just pretend he's going to wake up tomorrow, and this isn't going to be his reality. Because it is, Nate. And we have to help him learn to deal with it. We can't just keep avoiding situations that... So sending him off to middle school like a lamb to the slaughter? Dad answered angrily. But he didn't even finish his sentence because he saw me in the mirror looking up. What's a lamb to the slaughter? I asked sleepily. Whew. Go back to sleep, Augie, Dad said softly. Everyone will stare at me at school, I said, suddenly crying. <laughs> Honey, Mom said. She turned around in the front seat and put her hand on my hand. You know, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. But we spoke to the principal there and we and told him about you. And he really wants to meet you. What did you tell him about me? How funny you are and how kind and smart. When I told him you read Dragon... When I told him you read Dragon Rider when you were six, he was like, wow, I have to meet this kid. Did you tell him anything else, I said. Mom smiled at me. Her smile kind of hugged me. 
I told him about all your surgeries and how brave you are, she said. So he knows what I look like, I asked. Well, we brought pictures from last summer in Montauk, Dad said. We showed him pictures of the whole family and that great shot of you holding the flounder on the boat. You were there too? I have to admit, I felt a little disappointed that he was a part of this. We both talked to him, yes, Dad said. He's a really nice man. You would like him, Mom added. Suddenly, it felt like they were on the same side. Wait, so when did you meet him, I said. He took us on, the school, on a tour of the school last year, said Mom. Last year, I said. So you've been thinking about this for a whole year and you didn't tell me? We didn't even know you'd get if you'd get in, Augie, answered Mom. It's a very hard school to get into. There's a whole admissions process. I didn't see the point in telling you and having you get all worked up about it unnecessarily. But you're right, Augie. We should have talked to you when we found out last month that you got in, said Dad. In hindsight, sighed Mom. <sighs> yes, I guess. Did that lady who came to the house that time have something to do with this, I said? The one that gave me that test? Yes, actually, said Mom, looking guiltily. Yes, yes I said. I know. Well, that, that was a white lie, she answered. It was a test you needed to take to get into the school. You did very well on it, by the way. So you lied, I said. A white lie, but yes, yeah, sorry, she said, trying to smile. But when I didn't smile back, she turned around in her seat and faced forward. What's a lamb to the slaughter, I said. Mom sighed and gave Daddy a look. Have you seen that look before from your mom or your dad? Mm -hmm. yeah. I shouldn't have said that, said Dad, looking at me in the rearview mirror. It's not true. Here's the thing. Mommy and I love you so much. We want to protect you in any way we can. It's just sometimes we want to do it in different ways. I don't want to go to school, I answered, folding my arms. It would be good for you, Augie, said Mom. Maybe I'll go next year, I said, looking out the window. This year would be better, Augie, said Mom. You know why? Because you're, you'll be going into fifth grade, and that's the first year of middle school for everyone. You won't be the only new kid. I'll be the only one that looks like me, I said. I'm not going to say it won't be a big challenge for you, because you know better than that, she answered. But it'll be good for you, Augie. You'll make lots of friends, and you'll learn things you'll, you'd never learn with me. She turned in her seat again and looked at me. When we took that the tour, you know what they had in their science lab? A little baby chick that was just hatching out of its egg. It was so cute. Augie had actually remi kind of reminded me of you when you were a little baby with those big brown eyes of yours. I usually love when they talk about when I was a baby. Sometimes I want to curl up into a tiny, little tiny ball and let them hug me and kiss me all over. I miss being a baby, not knowing stuff. But I wasn't in the mood for that now. I don't want to go, I said. How about this? Can you at least meet Mr. Tushman before making up your mind, Mom asked. Mr. Tushman, I said. He's the principal, answered Mom. Mr. Tushman, I repeated. I know, right? Dad answered, smiling and looking at me in the rearview mirror. Can you believe that name, Augie? I mean, who on earth would ever agree to have a name like Mr. Tushman? I smiled, even though I didn't want to let them see me smile. Dad was the one person in the world who could make me laugh, no matter how much I didn't want to laugh. Dad always made everyone laugh. Augie, you know you should go to that school just so you can hear his name being said over the loudspeaker, said Dad excitedly. Can you imagine how funny that would be? Hello! Hello, pagey Mr. Tushman. Oh, sorry. Hello, hello, pagey Mr. Tushman. He was using a fake high old lady voice. Hi, Mr. Tushman, I see you're running a little behind today. Did you get your, did your car get rear-ended? What a bum rap. I started laughing, not even because I thought he was being that funny, but because I wasn't in the mood to stay mad anymore. 
It could be worse, though, Dad continued in his normal voice. Mommy and I had a professor in college called Miss Butt. Mom was laughing now, too. Is that for real, I said. Roberta Butt, her mom answered, raising her hand as if to swear. Bobby Butt. She had huge cheeks, said Dad. Nate, said Mom. What? She had big cheeks is all I'm saying. Mom laughed and shook her head at the, at the same time. <laughs> hey, hey, I know, said Dad excitedly. Let's fix them up on a blind date. Can you imagine Miss Butt meet Mr. Tushman? Mr. Tushman, here's Miss Butt. They could get married and have a bunch of little tushies. Poor Mr. Tushman, answered Mom, shaking her head. Augie hasn't even met the man yet, Nate. Who's Mr. Tushman, Via asked groggily. She had just woken up. He's the principal of my new school, I answered. KG Mr. Tushman. I would have been more nervous about meeting Mr. Tushman if I'd known I was going to meeting, be meeting some kids from the new school. But I didn't know, so if anything, I was kind of giggly. I couldn't stop thinking about all the jokes Daddy had made about Mr. Tushman's name. So when me and Mom arrived at Beecher Prep a few weeks before the start of school, and I saw Mr. Tushman standing there waiting for us at the entrance, I started giggling right away. He didn't look at all like what I pictured, though I, I guess I thought I, he would have had a huge butt, but and he didn't. In fact, he was a pretty normal guy, tall and thin, old, but not really old. He seemed nice. He shook my mom's hand first. Hey, Mr. Tushman, it's nice to see you again, said Mom. This is my son, August. Mr. Tushman looked right at me and smiled and nodded. He put his hand out for me to shake. Hi, August, he said, totally normal. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi, I mumbled, dropping my hand into his hand while I looked down at his feet. He was wearing red Adidas. So he said, kneeling down in front of me, in front of, yeah. So I couldn't look at his sneakers, but had to look at his face. Your mom and dad have told me a lot about you. Like, what have they told you? I asked. Sorry? Honey, you have to speak up, said mom. Like what? I said, trying not to mumble. I meant I have a bad habit of mumbling. Well, that you like to read, said Mr. Tushman, and that you're a great artist. He had blue eyes with white eyelashes. And you're into science, right? Uh-huh, I said, nodding. We have a couple of great science electives at Beecher, he said. Maybe you'll take one of them. Uh-huh, I said, though I had no idea what an elective was. So are you ready to take the tour? You mean we're doing that now, I said. Did you think we were going to the movies, he answered, smiling as he stood up. You didn't tell me we were taking a tour, I said to Mom in my accusing voice. Augie, she started to say. It'll be fine, August, said Mr. Tushman, holding his hand out to me. I promise. I think he wanted me to take his hand, but I took Mom's instead. He smiled and started walking toward the entrance. Mommy gave my hand a little squeeze, though I don't know if it was an I love you squeeze or an I'm sorry squeeze. Probably a little of both. The only school I'd ever been inside of was Via's when I went with Mom and Dad to watch Via sing in a spring concert and stuff like that. This school was very different. It was smaller. It smelled like a hospital. And he would know, right? Because he's had lots of surgeries, been in the hospital a lot of times. Nice Mrs. Garcia. Oops, sorry. Nice Mrs. Garcia. We followed Mr. Tushman down a few hallways there weren't a lot of people around, and, a few, and the few who were there didn't seem to notice me at all. Though that may have been because they didn't see me, I sort of hid behind Mom as, we, as I walked. I know that sounds kind of babyish of me, but I wasn't feeling very brave right then. We ended up in a small room with the words, Office of the Middle School Director on the door. Inside there was a desk with a nice-seeming lady sitting behind it. This is Mrs. Garcia, said Mr. Tushman, and the lady smiled at Mom and took off her glasses and got up out of her chair. My mother shook her hand and said, Isabel Pullman, nice to meet you. And this is August, Mr. Tushman said. Mom kind of stepped to the side a bit so I would move forward. That, then that thing happened that I've seen happen a million times before. 
When I looked up at her, Mrs. Garcia's eyes dropped for a second. It was so fast, no one else would have noticed since the rest of her face stayed exactly the same. She was smiling a really shiny smile. Such a pleasure to meet you, August, she said, holding her, out her hand for me to shake. Hi, I said quietly, giving her my hand. But I didn't want to look at her face, so I kept staring at her glasses, which hung from a chain around her neck. Wow, what a firm grip, said Mrs. Garcia. Her hand was really warm. The kids got a killer handshake, Mr. Tushman agreed, and everyone laughed above my head. You can call me Mrs. G, Mrs. Garcia said. I think she was talking to me, but I was looking at all the stuff on her desk now. That's what everyone calls me. Mrs. G, I forgot my combination. Mrs. G, I need a late pass. Mrs. G, I want to change my elective. Mrs. G is actually the one who runs the place, said Mr. Tushman, which again made all the grown-ups laugh. I'm here every morning by 7.30, Mrs. Garcia continued, still looking at me while I stared at her brown sandals, with small purple flowers on the buckles. So if you ever need anything, August, I'm the one to ask. And you can ask me anything. Why does he know so many details about her shoes? Yeah, why is he looking down though? What's the big deal? Why 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 does it matter that he's looking down so much? Yeah, he's ashamed of his face. Have you ever like walked into a store and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to see that person and you hide your eyes and think, well, maybe if they don't see me, they're not gonna talk to me. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Or like, oh, if I hurry really quick around this corner, they're not going to see me and talk to me. Or, oh, my word. Or one of my friends, Miss Richardson, ran into several times at one of the stores, didn't I? And it was so funny because eventually the parents said, are you, are you following us, Miss Richardson? I'm like, no, I'm not following you. We just happen to be going down the same ways at the same time. Yeah, and like, yeah, so totally, totally some parents, sometimes I, you know, if it's people I really like, um, I'll go up and talk to them. We talked several times, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but sometimes, you know, I'm busy or I'm in a hurry or whatever, and I just don't, okay? All right, so um, he's looking at the ground. He's embarrassed because of his face he has already she's already avoided his eye contact so i don't think he really wants to chat with her Okay. Okay, I mumbled. Oh, look at that cute baby, Mom said, pointing to one of the photographs on Mrs. Garcia's bulletin board. Is he yours? No, my goodness, said Mrs. Garcia, smiling big now that was smiling a big smile now that was totally different from her shiny smile. You've just made my day. He's my grandson. What a cutie, said Mom, shaking her head. How old? In that picture, he was five months old, I think. But he's big now, almost eight years old. Wow, said Mom, nodding and smiling. Well, he is absolutely beautiful. Thank you, said Mrs. Garcia, nodding like she was about to say something else about her grandson. But then, all of a sudden, her smile got a little smaller. We're going to take very good care of August, she said to my mom, and I saw her give my mom's hand a little squeeze. I looked at my mom's face, and that's when I realized she was just as nervous as I was. I guess I liked Mrs. Garcia when she wasn't wearing her 
shiny smile. Jack, Will, Julian, and Charlotte. I don't know if I can get all of this done. We'll try it. Um, we followed Mr. Tushman into a small room across from Mrs. Garcia's desk. He was talking as he closed the door to his office and sat down behind, behind his big desk. Though I really, I wasn't really paying as much attention to what he was saying. I was looking around at all the things on his desk. Cool stuff like a globe that floated in the air and a Rubik's type cube made with little mirrors. I liked his office a lot. I liked that there were all these neat little drawings and paintings by students on the walls framed like they were important. Mom sat down in a chair in front of Mr. Tushman's desk and even though there was another chair right next to hers, I decided to stand beside her. Why do you have your own room and Mrs. G doesn't, I said. You mean why do I have an office, asked Mr. Tushman? You said she runs the place, I said. Oh, well, I was kind of kidding. Mrs. G is my assistant. Mr. Tushman is the director of the middle school, Mom explained. Do they call you Mr. T? I asked, which made him smile. Do you know who Mr. T is? He answered. I pity the foo. He said in a fu funny, tough voice, like he was intimidating someone. Anybody know who Mr. T is from the A-team? Yeah? Um... I had no idea what he was talking about. Anyway, no, said Mr. Tushman, shaking his head. No one calls me Mr. T, though I have a feeling I'm called a lot of other... A lot of other things I don't know about. Let's face it, a name like mine is not so easy to live with, you know what I mean? Here I have to admit, I totally laughed. Because <laughs> I knew exactly what he meant. My mom and dad had a teacher called Miss Butt, I said. Augie, said Mom, but Mr. Tushman laughed. Now that's bad, said Mr. Tushman, shaking his head. I guess I shouldn't complain. So, hey, so listen, August, here's what I thought we would do today. Is that a pumpkin, I said, pointing to a framed painting behind Mr. Tushman's desk. Augie, sweetie, don't interrupt, said Mom. You like it, said Mr. Tushman, turning around and looking at the painting. I do, too, and I thought it was a pumpkin, too, until the student who gave it to me explained... But it's not a pumpkin. It is, are you ready for this? A portrait of me. What? I know. Now, August, I ask you, do I really look that much like a pumpkin? No, I answered, though I was thinking, yes. Something about the way his cheeks puffed out when he smiled made him look like a jack-o'-lantern. Just as I thought that it occurred to me how funny that was, cheeks, Mr. Tushman, and I started laughing a little. I shook my head, covered my mouth with my hand. Mr. Tushman smiled like he could read my mind. I was about to say something else, but then all of a sudden I heard other voices outside the office. Kids' voices. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but my heart literally started beating like I'd run the longest race in the world. The laughter I had inside just poured out of me. The thing is, when I was little, I never minded meeting new kids because all the kids I met were really little too. What's cool about little kids is that they don't say stuff to try to hurt your feelings, even though sometimes they, they do say stuff that hurts your feelings. But they don't actually know what they're saying. Big kids, though, they know what they're saying. And that is definitely not fun for me. One of the reasons I grew my hair long last year was that I like how my bangs cover my eyes. It helps me block out the things I don't want to see. Mrs. Garcia knocked on the door and poked her head inside. They're here, Mr. Tushman, she said. Who's here, I said. Thanks, said Mr. Tushman and Mrs. Garcia. August, I thought it would be good for you to meet some students who will be in your home room this year. I figured they could take you around the school a bit, show you the lay of the land, so to speak. I don't want to meet anyone, I said to Mom. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Tishman was suddenly right in front of me, his hands on my shoulders. He leaned down and very, said very softly in my ear, it'll, it'll be okay, August. These are nice kids, I promise. I don't want to meet anyone, I said to Mom. Mr. Tishman was suddenly right in front of me, his hands on my shoulders. He leaned down and said very softly in my ear, it'll be okay, August. These are nice kids, I promise. You're going to be okay, Augie, Mom whispered with all her might. But before she could say anything else, Mr. Tushman opened the door to his office. Come on in, kids, he said. 
and in walked two boys and a girl. None of them looked over at me or mom. They just stood by the door looking straight at Mr. Tushman like their lives depended on it. Thanks so much for coming in, guys, especially since school doesn't start until next month, said Mr. Tushman. Have you had a good summer? All of them nodded, but no one said anything. Great, great, said Mr. Tushman. So, guys, I wanted you to meet August, who's going to be a new student here this year. August, these guys have been students at Beecher Prep since kindergarten. So, of course, they were in the lower school building, but they know all the ins and outs of the middle school program. And since you're all in the same homeroom, I thought it would be nice if you guys, if you got to know each other a little before school started, okay? So, kids, this is August. August, this is Jack Will. Jack Will looked at me and put out his hand. When I shook it, he kind of half smiled and said, hey, and looked down really fast. This is Julian, said Mr. Tushman. Hey, said Julian, and did the exact same thing as Jack Will. Took my hand, forced a smile, looked down fast. And Charlotte, said Mr. Tushman. Charlotte had the blondest hair I've ever seen. She didn't shake my hand, but gave me a quick little wave and smiled. Hi, August, nice to meet you, she said. Hi, I said, looking down. She was wearing bright green cracks. So, Mr. Tushman, putting his hands together in a kind of slow clap, what I thought you guys could do is take August on a little tour of school. Maybe you could start on the third floor. That's where your homeroom class is going to be. Room 301. I think Mrs. G is... Room 301, Mrs. G. Mrs. Garcia called out from the other room. Room 301, Mr. Tushman nodded. And then you can show August the science labs in the computer room. Then work your way down to the library and the performance space on the second floor. Take him to the cafeteria, of course. Shall we take him to the music room, asked Julian. Good idea, yes, said Mr. Tushman. August, do you play any instruments? No, I said. It wasn't my favorite subject on account of the fact that I don't really have ears. Well, I do, but they don't exactly look like normal ears. Well, you may enjoy seeing the music room anyway, said Mr. Tushman. We have a very nice selection of percussion instruments. August, you've been wanting to learn to play the drums, Mom said, trying to get me to look at her. But my eyes were covered by my bangs as I stared at a piece of old gum that was stuck to the bottom of Mr. Tushman's desk. Great. Okay, so why don't you guys get going, said Mr. Tushman. Just be back here in, he looked at Mom, half an hour okay? I think Mom nodded. So is that okay with you, August, he asked me. I didn't answer. Is that okay, August, Mom repeated. I looked at her now. I wanted her to see how mad I was at her. But then I saw her face and just nodded. She seemed more scared than I was. The other kids had started out the door, so I followed them. See you soon, said Mom. Her, See you soon, said Mom, her voice sounding a little higher than normal. I didn't answer her. So we are going to stop there. Let's look at the questions that you're going to be doing for today. And so you are responsible for pages 20 or 3 to 23 questions. So, why do people look away quickly when they first see August? And then in this section, August discusses the issue of him going to school. Why has he never gone to school before? Do you think he should? And um, you need to make sure that you use races. Let me put your little slip up and I'll remind you what it is. Races are, restate the question. You're going to cross off the question word and write it as a statement. A, you're going to answer the question, make an inference based on the text. I think, I believe. C, cite the evidence from your text to support your evidence. Inference, I'm sorry. Use a direct quote. The text says, the author says. E, explain how the quote and evidence you use support your inference. This shows, this is because, this means. Uh, sum it all up. Restate the question as a conclusion. That's to sum things up, as you can see. So, um, 
I'm not assigning a ton of questions. Uh, mainly we haven't read a ton of writing, but make sure that when you're answering the questions, you're going to use races. This is a really vital skill, and I want to make sure that you guys are going to be successful going forward. Any questions about the assignment for tomorrow? What? Yes. I am not an ogre. I. The truth is I want you to be successful. The only time you really can't look back in the book is when you're taking an AR test, right? Or when you're taking a test. Questions about the book? Absolutely. Look back. Find the information that you need to be successful. Any other questions? Okay. Remember what we talked about this morning? Questions are, do you understand this assignment? Do you have any questions about this particular assignment? Did you have a question about this particular assignment? No. All right. So we will talk to you guys later. Talk to you later. Bye.